Okay, so here's an already answer to all the questions. Hopefully this will be something that you could use to study for the exam one. I know it's like uh, coming. I've tried to do this a, few, a couple of times, but I have some technical issues. I'm going to try to do this um, before every, every exam. The first question we did in class is, has to do with opportunity cost. Remember that the opportunity cost of something is the, is the net value of the best alternative you have that you give up when you do something. In this particular case, uh, even though the car is free, you have the option of keeping the car or selling it. If you can sell it, you can get $10,000, which is the market value of the car. So if you keep the car, even though it's, the car was given to you as a gift, if you keep the car, you actually giving up $10,000 you can make by selling it. So that's why the answer to this question is B. The second one is also has to do with opportunity costs. On this one, uh, Rachel has two options. She can either take a job for 50000 or she can actually uh, travel across India. She cannot do both things at the same time. If she travels across India, she's giving up the $50,000. So uh, clearly, if if her income goes up, then going to India actually costs her more because she's giving up more money. So of the following, the one that would increase the opportunity cost will be anything that will actually increase the salary. And that's actually option C, which is actually a 3500 increase in her job offer. If her job offer goes up, the money she gives up by going to India is actually higher. The third one actually is a, probably the third, the, hard, the most difficult question in opportunity cost. Now the key here is for you to understand uh, first what the value is of going to see Dylan. And the value of going to see Dylan um, is basically the, well, your, your, your value of Dylan is actually, so value of Dylan is $50. And the cost is forty dollars. So after you see Dylan, after you pay the forty dollars, whatever what what do you have left of value is is the ten dollars, right? So the net value of seeing dealers, Dylan is $10, right? It's not $50 because you have to spend $40 to see Dylan. It's like when you go and buy um, a soda for $2 and you're willing to pay $3 for the soda and you pay actually two. Well, after buying the soda, how much better off you are? Well, you're better off $1 because you were willing to pay three and you only pay for two. Now notice that no one is actually giving you a dollar. It's something that happens sort of in your mind and abstractly, right? It's, 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 um, it's a hypothetical construct so that we can measure the value that consumers get from buying something in dollar terms so we can compare it to the cost. So even though no one is, uh, for this person, even though no one is giving you $50, you, you actually are willing to pay $50 you end up paying 40 so after you see Dylan, you're $10 better off because that's a leftover from the money you were willing to pay after you pay for it. So if you understand that the net value of seeing Dylan is $10, then clearly the cost of not seeing Dylan is whatever you would have gained if you saw Dylan, which is $10. So the cost of not seeing Dylan is $10. So clearly the cost of going to see Mary Clapton, which won't allow you to see Dylan, would also be ten dollars. Okay, so um, so the cost of seeing um, Mary Clapton is giving you're giving up the net value you get from Dylan, which is ten dollars. On this one is um, sort of like the opportunity cost question is um, you have three options: you can wash your car, you can work an extra morning shift for thirty dollars. Or you can do you can go with your friend for an outing. Now you cannot do the three things at the same time. So if you do one thing, you won't be able to. The cost of doing that thing is whatever else you would have done. So if you actually go with your friend, then you will not be able to wash your car. So the cost of going with your friend is actually not being able to wash your car, 
which is actually fifty dollars. And all you another thing you could have done is actually work. But if you're if you had not gone with your friend, you would not have gone to work because going to work gives you less value than watching your car. Going to work gives you thirty dollars and watching your car give you fifty dollars. So the cost of going with your friend cannot be both the thirty dollars you make in another job and also uh, watching your car because you will not have been able to do both things at the same time. So the cost of going with your friend is the highest alternative you have if you don't go with your friend, which will be watching your car. So the cost of going with your friend is fifty dollars. Uh, this one is basically um, this, uh, the question is about marginal benefits and marginal costs. The the part of the decision that matters when you make a decision is the change in the situation. So, for instance, in this particular case, if you buy the electronic game in the campus store, you save ten dollars, and if you buy the computer at the campus store, I mean at the at the mall, you save ten dollars, um, and if you buy the electronic game at the mall, it's you save ten dollars because you can buy them at the mall, each of them for ten dollars less. So, the benefits of buying the good at the mall is $10 and the cost of buying the good at the campus store will be also $10 because it will be the $10 you give up. So in both cases the marginal cost, the change in cost if you make a decision will be uh, and the change in benefits of making the decision is exactly the same as $10. So that's why the answer in this particular case is C. Now this one has to do with the, the economics at the pop and the idea here is that the quality of the pickup line will change depending on how many girls and boys are. And the more girls there are, the less competition guys will have to face in order to um, get the attention of a girl, so the less effort they will have to make. And effort is a measure of the, quali of the pickup line, the quality of the pickup line. The more effort a, a guy has to make, the more he will actually invest on the pickup line, you know, maybe like buying a drink to the girl. And the less effort a guy has to make to get attention of the girl, well, the less quali the, the lower the quality of the pickup line because th the guy will not spend time thinking about a good pickup line. So he can go to a girl with something like, how you doing? So more girls, less competition for, for guys, less girls, more competition for guys, higher quality of the pickup line. So if everything else is the same and the number of girls increases, there's less competition for guys. And we should see that in lower effort for pickup line, for you know, for coming up with a pickup line, the quality of the pickup line will go down. So B is the right answer here. And an increase in the number of girls reduce competition for guys, and the pickup line will the quality of the pickup line will decrease. Now on this one, uh, what you have is a change in another situation. Uh, if we assume that girls never like basketball and and guys actually like basketball, if the basketball game comes in the TV monitors, well, a lot of the guys will go and watch the game, and they will not care about getting the attentions of girls and whoever whatever guys don't watch the game are going to be facing less competition for girls so again less competition for between guys for the attention of girls means less effort and, and hence lower quality the pickup line right so if there's if there's a championship game on the tv monitors all the girls stay there and no don't watch the games and half of the guys go watch the game then the other half of the guys that stay will actually face less competition for girls and they will be able to get the attention of a girl with a lower quality of the pickup line. So the answer to this one is also be a decrease in the quality of the pickup line. Now this one has to do with the video we just saw and um, actually we saw in, <laughs> in class. And what happens here is that once the, bo the, the kids see the other kid using the hula hoop, then they are willing to pay some money before the price of the hula was zero. So they're willing to pay some money or definitely a lot more than they were willing to pay before when they didn't know how to use it. So when they know how to use it, they're willing to pay more for the hula hoop at every price. So the demand curve in increases. An increase in the demand curve will, will, will increase competition for the good and hence increase the cost of the good. Same way that increased competition for girls increases the quality of the pickup line. So an increase of competition for the hula hoop because more people want to buy it at every price means 
that the price actually goes up because the demand curve shifts to the right or the demand curve increases. So the answer here is uh, B, increases by more than a little bit, so the demand curve increases. Now, when the, de uh, the demand doesn't have to increase all the time, the demand increases only when the willingness to pay for a good at every price changes, meaning that people either value things more or maybe they have more income than before, meaning something changes in the, in the willingness to pay at every price. When, if that doesn't change, then the demand curve stays the same way or the demand doesn't change. So when the price of pizza goes down, what happens is that more people who were not willing to buy pizza before now are able to buy pizza because the pizza is cheaper. See that people willingness to pay for pizza hasn't changed. They're just able to buy more pizza. If you're you're going to the pizzeria and before you get there, you're, you're willing to pay $5 for a slice of pizza and each pizza costs you $2.50, uh, you're probably going to end up buying, let's say, one slice of pizza for two fifty or two slices for, for for five dollars. Now, if you get there and the slice of pizza, the price of the slice of pizza is actually one, well, you probably, you perhaps are, you know, end up buying five slices. But it's not because you like pizza more. It's just because you can afford more slices. See, this is not a change in demand. It's simply an increase in the quantity of consumption. So, When the price of pizza goes down, the demand for pizza doesn't change. The demand for pizza will only change when something else other than the price will change. Okay, this one has to uh, uh, ask you if you if you know how what's the reason why the demand curve is downward sloping, and the reason is because when the price of something goes up, you give up a lot more stuff that you cannot buy. So when the quantity of demand of a slice of pizza goes down, um, uh, the quantity of demand of a slice of pizza goes down, and the price actually increases, is because people actually give up a lot more stuff when the price of pizza goes up, and therefore. They're, a lot of them are not willing to give up those things, so therefore they reduce their consumption of pizza, right? Because when the price of pizza is, let's say, again, let's say the price of pizza is five dollars, and the price of burgers is one dollar. When you, when you buy one pizza, you give up five burgers. But when the price of pizza is ten dollars, well, to consuming one pizza means giving up ten burgers, right? So a lot of people are not going to be willing to give up that many burgers, so they will not consume. Uh, any pizza or a lot less pizza when the price of pizza goes up. So the reason why the uh, demand curve um, is downward sloping is because the opportunity cost of something changes as the price changes. In this particular case, if the price of pizza um, increases the quantity demand that uh, goes down because the opportunity cost of the pizza actually goes higher. So the answer for this one is B. This one is pretty straightforward. If, uh, if the U.S. Surgeon General releases a statement saying, you know, our dreams come true, pizza is six times, eating pizza six times a week reduces your risk of a heart attack by 50%. Well, a lot of people are going to buy a lot more pizza than before. And they're going to be willing, the value for pizza increase. So everyone will be willing to pay a lot more money for pizza than they did before at every price. So the demand curve actually shifts to the right or increases and there's more competition for pizza, so the price of pizza will increase. Now, this one has to do with complements. If pizza and beer are complements, then people like to consume them together. When the price of beer goes down, then people will like to buy more beer, and if they buy more beer, they want to buy more pizza. So, in essence, when the price of beer goes down, people want to pay more money for the pizza at every price of the pizza. So, the demand for pizza actually increases. So when the price of a complement goes down, the demand for the other good, the good that's a complement, also increases. So when the price of beer goes down, the demand for pizza increases, and hence increases the price of pizza.